You just got started? Yeah, we're a brand new website. We're for disabled drag queens, fans, enthusiasts. Uh, we're trying to create a home where they can all participate to, and find a place for each other. And also as an advocacy place because we need to change access so that people can be a part of the drag world and I don't know, get into clubs. Have you been involved with Sage at all? I'm sorry? Have you been involved with Sage? No. Uh, we literally, as I said, we're brand new. Uh, we kind of formed after coming to last year's event. And we saw how bad people were having were struggling with access. And we thought we need to do something about it. I understand it because I had Achilles heel and I was laid up for six months and then I discovered I could put in a pro foot and walk again. I have I have a walker. Two wheelchairs and and a, a, a motor scooter with an electric motor. It's terrible being disabled. You got you got a sticker so you can please huh? go uh, when you get a chance. Go to the website, um, sign up or so is I it can. Pink or is that the website Pink Oracle? Yeah. There's a a contact form on the website. Yeah. Send so me an email. Right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have a database so that disabled people can find each other and have a way to talk. Right now, it's just the website's barely set up yet, so it's have asking... You, have you tried connecting with a disabled community? Because I found that when I got my electric, suddenly was in an electric three-wheeler. Yeah. Every little brick made me bump, and you know, if I went off a curb and the things were uneven, I didn't realize. And you saw the whole world were monsters. And in New York, all the monsters are looking up at the skyscrapers, oh, yeah. and you're this wee little thing in an electric scooter. Yeah, it's kind of terrifying. I mean, I say I have friends that won't go out in their own electric wheelchair. People that become prisoners. A woman downstairs who has disintegrating spine won't even go out in this big like it's, a, it's like a, a Cadillac wheelchair. Right. She That's, can run over people, and but she's afraid. I, I think when I for that first I first became disabled, that was starting to happen to me. I was starting to become afraid of interacting with the rest of the world because it wasn't designed to deal with me. Right. So I was staying in a lot and not going anywhere. Me too. I laid up in bed for six months on it because I had an Achilles heel. I thought it would heal, and then it didn't. And then I finally found about putting a foot insert, and it took care of it. Oh and so then it was like discovering the ability to walk again. I'm glad to see that you're up on your feet again. That's yeah, great. well, I mean, this was a wheelchair a friend sold me. That's great. You know what's great about that? Because I can walk up and down, and a friend can carry that on his head up and down. It was made by a friend for his 97 pound um, uh, Alzheimer's mother. Do you mind if I and, take a picture of that? No, please do. It's, one, it's a really just, it's just a regular chair. What it is is a regular. This is a regular chair, a regular chair. It was made by George Heath. He's an incredibly inventive person, but he made it for his mother. It's stuff like that, you know, resources that I want. I, there's no other. I told him you should make, they should have a lightweight wheelchair because this thing, you know, even the regular chairs I've got that fold up, they weigh too much to carry up and down. Oh, yeah. When I just got this thing in April, but we went researching trying to find one, uh, trying to find a lightweight foldable wheelchair that was under like 10 pounds was impossible. I can't lift more than 10 pounds, so what do they expect people to do with a foldable wheelchair that weighs 50 pounds? Right. Oh, right. and that's what most of them weigh. Most of them are heavy. Yeah. I got a little silver one that's made out of leather, very chic looking, but I still couldn't pick it up with this thing here. I don't know what it weighs, but you can't fold it up. It's just a regular chair that he adapted wheels on. And, you, and they, actually, I, I can't really push it very well myself, but I have someone push me in it, and I can go on the Gay Pride Day Parade, and I, I have friends that push me, and I hop in and out taking films when I feel like it, when I have the energy. Because I, could, I couldn't walk 38 blocks over three and a half hours. I want you to check out this company. Is, is this the company that you got the lightweight wheelchair from? No, this is okay. This company makes different kind of devices that will hold your media. Um, oh wait, I didn't finish writing the name. One second. Um, 
with. What they do is they make different things that either are bolt-ons or screw-ons that can hold your phone, your iPad, the oh. camera itself. So that way you can stay in control of your chair and still film at the same time. And it helps keep it steadier. But I they don't I don't see their products in a lot of places. I think you almost have to. Now my friend them out. made a thing to hold on the back of his phone so it would he and it had a band around his wrist so it wouldn't fall out. He could grind it himself. Oh, that's genius. So there are people it's very nice. What is your name again? My name is Ramona DeBone. Ramona DeBone. I also go by Russell when I don't have the hair on. <laughs> Well, I'll give you my card and let's keep in touch. Oh, please. I will give I'm in touch with a lot of media and I'm interested in people with disabilities. And it'd be interesting your interaction with disabled people, if they identify with being disabled right. more or they get upset at the fact that you're a drag queen. Right. To us, it doesn't matter. We will, we like anything and everything. I'm a giant Crayola box of birds. Right, right. I agree with you. It's funny because in some groups, like say S and M, right. an S and M gay couple will have more in common with an S and M straight couple than they have with other gay S and M other gay regular couples or right. straight. In other words, everybody has a little niche in the world where they feel the most comfortable. Right. And I see no reason why anybody should be upset about the fact that you're free enough to be to wear pretty pink hair. Right. Why can't males be beautiful too? I was a transgender fashion activist. But I decided to just push the edge a little bit. You know, not go drag because I don't want to look like I'm doing a parody or like I'm an imitation woman, even with a beard. But if you put it, I always try to wear some female clothing. Right. And uh, it adds something. It just, you, if you really push it just a little bit, you kind of be super stylish. Well, you know, it's interesting. With my husband, when I first decided to start doing drag, I obviously, when you first start drag, you go crazy buying clothes. Because oh, me too. You're like, oh, I want to wear and that at some point. I want to wear that at some point. Right. And at a certain point, I turned to my husband and I said, you know, I wouldn't mind wearing that during normal times. And I'm not talking like a ball gown, but it right. might have been a woman's blouse or right. a I bought skirt. women's shirts for $2 and they were on sale and they had shirt. I rolled up the sleeves and all kinds of men would say to me, wow, that's a where did you get that beautiful shirt? Because there's nothing nice looking in menswear. Right. I said, it's a woman's shirt, extra, extra large. I just rolled up the sleeves. Yeah. But they complimented on it, and the same people would be so uptight, they wouldn't think of doing that themselves. Oh, no. But when they see it in a way that they, it, they oh, that's just a pretty shirt. Right. So it's groundbreaking then. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much. Oh, Eddie, do you have one of your cards? Yes, I'm going to give you one. Okay, I'm going to make sure I put it right into my okay. purse. Okay.